Welcome to the ninth technique video of Icon Resource, Resizing Icons. First off, for this course, go to iconfactory.com. The Icon Factory provides a tool that is very, very useful in resizing icons. It also comes with a few files that are very handy for resizing icons. So if you hop over there now, you can download it. Go to Software, scroll down a bit, and there you will find Icon Builder for Windows or Icon Builder for Macintosh. Download your appropriate version. Icon Builder is a tool that can help you generate icons in various sizes. It also comes with a set of grid files that are very, very handy. The Icon Factory also makes other icon related applications, such as Candy Bar, a great icon changing application for OS X. If you want inspiration, you can always drop by their freeware section, which has great quality icons. For example, these Agua Leopard fo folders are absolutely fantastic. And as you can see, they even come with pencils, brushes, and documents, like you've just learned to make. For now, let's wait for Icon Builder to download. Once Icon Builder is downloaded, you're presented with a disk image, that is, on a Macintosh. On both Windows and Macintosh, you need to install Icon Builder. The Icon Builder plugin can be installed in your Photoshop plugins folder. What we're interested in now, rather than later, are the grid files inside the Icon Builder Essentials file. Use expanded.psd and open it. As you can see, it is a grid file with all the icon sizes you may need and we're going to resize our icon in this template. It's very handy. And even if you don't have an Icon Builder license, you can still use it. So copy your, your icon merged. And go ahead, switch to the Icon Builder template. If you paste it in place, you'll notice that it is far too large. Drag it. Drag the center of the icon towards the general direction of the middle of the image. Click this little chain and drag the resize slider. So it resizes into its own center. You'll soon have it have the handles ready for you to use. Place the largest version into the 512 pixel square. Making it fit exactly is quite important. It should fit across all the squares evenly. So if so when you resize it up you don't even notice a shift in position. The 256 pixel icon can be easily derived from this version. Simply duplicate the layer, press free transform, and enter 50% with the percentage prompt. Now there's your icon at 50%. You only need to fit it in quite well. For the 128 pixel versions, copy this layer, do not use copy merge but copy, create a new file at 512 by 512 to accommodate the icon exactly, and now we need to downscale it. Position it correctly in the square, if you think you got it right, press image, image size, and enter 128 pixels. However, choose by cubic sharper as a resampling method. This generates a very sharp icon. Copy this layer again. And bring it over to the expanded grid. Paste it in place and drag it towards the 128 pixel square. As you can see on this background, it works beautifully already. This brush tip, however, could use a bit more contrast. You can select with the lasso tool and increase the layers. With this, the saturation is somewhat increased, so I'll decrease that too. 
use U saturation, command U, to decrease the saturation. There we go. You can virtually always copy the 128 pixel version into the 48 pixel version. This just about works good enough. Naturally, the 128 pixel version will have to be shifted a bit to the left to be correct. Right now, it is right heavy, and if you change the size of the icon, it would jump in a square. 32 and 16 pixels, however, need redrawn versions. We'll need to optimize these, or else they won't be clear enough at those sizes. Try it for yourself. Take the 48 pixel icon, drag it into the 32 pixel square, and resize it. Apart from becoming a blurry mess, it's just not clear enough at that size. So let's open our document. Yes, our blank document file. We're going to combine it with Painty, our paint partner, to generate a head-on version of the document. Since the page grill is on a separate layer here, we're even going to have an even easier task. Resize it as appropriate again. A bit of overlap is no problem. Select the transparency of the layer, invert the selection, and delete. You know the trick by now. There we go. Now, as you can see, it already has a slight paper edge on the right side. Let's make those a bit, a bit stronger. The lines have to be a lot thicker to come out at 32 pixels. So with the rectangular marquee tool, cut out some parts of it. Every pixel does matter at this size. So if you overstep your bounds a bit, try shifting the selection a bit to the right. Now we only have to adjust these colors. That's easy. Playing around a lot with the U and saturation panel can be very useful. It's a powerful tool. Well, there's the document as we know it. The next step is obviously simple. We copy merged it and take it to the expanded grid. Paste it in its place. It is probably fast. That's no big a deal. Try making it a bit smaller to make it manageable. Make an approximation there. Zoom into your area and drag it into its little box. As you can see, it's far from pixel perfect at this size. Of course, we'll have to do some manual work to get this perfect. To make gorgeous pixel perfect icons, we need to work on the pixel level. First, go to Preferences, Guides, Grid, Slices, and Count. Under the Grid section, put a grid line every one pixels with one subdivisions. This means you'll get a nice pixel grid. From View, Show, you can show the grid. If you're zoomed in enough, the grid is very useful. Now you can use the Pencil tool, an exact brush tool, for placing pixels. Sample the white color of the document and create a white outline, like we know in the document. But do not touch the darker outline. We'll need this for contrast later. Then select a part of the darker outline and unify this outline. Give it all the same color. These two strongly contrasting colors will give it contrast on just about any background, which is very important for an icon. Now we disable the grid, zoom out, and you'll see that we have a beautiful crisp icon. The only thing we need adding are our tools. 
extra details like the second paper are often left away at 32 pixels. You have to gauge what is essential in storytelling. What do you want to tell the user in this icon? I think we consider the utensils in this icon to be much more important than a secondary little leaflet. For this, I simply merge the layers of my tools in my original document and I paste them in. It has quite a beautiful effect if you drag them over. But let's ignore that for now and scale them down. We we'll have to scale these down quite a bit, so they'll almost vanish. Adjusting the angle is not a bad idea. Try to get as much of these utensils in the icon as possible. How can you place them? Does this work? Is this a nice composition? Does this seem awkward? This works nice enough for me. But hold on, we're not done yet. If you zoom out, you'll see it's not that clear. Not quite yet. Zoom in and check out the pixels. We're going to sample a bit and use the pencil to strengthen some highlights and to bring out some details. If you press shift while using the pencil, you can draw lines from one point to another. You should try it. It's a very useful tool. You can sample colors from the 32 pixel icon, which has more or the 48 pixel icon, which has more details. The pencil has become very thin. It's not a bad idea to fortify it a bit. While you're pixelating away at this, it is quite crucial that you keep the big picture in mind. So try everything, blur your eyes every now and then, check, check and double check. Hmm, this seems about right, let's zoom out a bit. Hmm, no I'm not really content yet. Let's zoom in again. If you blur your eyes now, you can see the pencil shows a bit of a bulge. By increasing opaque pixels here and there, you can help that. Adjust subtly by reducing the opacity of the pencil and using background colors. <coughs> see, that looks a lot better. Speak it here and there so it seems like a constant line with a constant width. This translates over into these small icons, believe it or not. Now duplicate these two layers for making the 16 pixel icon. They are a much better basis than the 48 pixel icon, I can guarantee you. Use the entire square as much as possible here. 16 pixels isn't a lot of space. For now, to edit the document, hide the utensils, and once again, use a white pixel. However, this time, I don't want you to use absolutely opaque. Except for the borders around it, completely opaque white would be really, really distracting this icon. So I want you to t sample a white part, fortify the curl a bit, but use reduced opacity for the other edges. This gives it, gives it a pronounced appearance, but not too contrast rich. Making the page curl more elaborate is very important here. Obviously, this really small angle is too small for the page curl to translate into the small size. You can enlarge it liberally. That is absolutely no problem.
Now that you've slightly optimized the page curl, finish off the borders a bit, and make the tools visible again. These resized tools aren't yet perfect. You need some strong contrasting colors to bring them out. Use the strongest colors you have. And sample shadows to increase contrast. Contrast is the thing that really works on these small sizes. The more contrast between a few pixels, the more clearly something jumps at you. Using shadow is therefore very important. Sample the highlights and the shadows from the 32 pixel icon. And once again, experiment around what works, what doesn't, what looks awkward, and what doesn't. At these small sizes, it's experimenting like never before. The brush is quite hard here because it isn't made of a straight angle. Well, a few more tweaks here and there. Yes, that's about right. I like it this way. As you can see, this icon works out works out really nice. On to iconizing. 